Thank you for that question. The way to do that is to look at where we are with government right now. Government does not have, or the federal government does not have a uh, revenue problem, it has a spending problem. So you have to sit down, just like we do with state government, we have a balanced budget. And I think if I support a balanced budget amendment. And so if you have a balanced budget amendment and you force Congress to prioritize those needs, that's how we can prioritize the needs and at the same time provide infrastructure and uh, support throughout the country. But it starts with balancing the budget. Otherwise, you keep on spending and spending. <clears throat> a balanced budget will force you to prioritize the needs of this country. They are competing priorities, and they are indeed. And I think the overarching priority is that we need to get the federal budget balanced, and that's imperative. We have to do it. That work is not going to happen overnight, either in terms of reaching agreement on doing it or how it will be done and how quickly it will be done. Uh, I've likened it to hitting a, uh, a wall in a vehicle going 100 miles an hour if we tried to balance the budget. For example, some asked for a ba balanced budget amendment immediately. I think it would be like hitting a brick wall going 100 miles an hour. Not realistic. So it's going to take time to get that done. Within that time frame, we do need to prioritize how expenditures are made, but I think it's the obligation of the congressman from this district to work for local priorities in terms of how federal funds flow into the district so that we can use those to address imperative needs here. Uh, one reason I'm in favor of block grant funding is it allows the local delegation to be involved in how that's uh, used. Well. To balance between um, the spending cuts that we're going to need to make and to maintain funding for programs that are within the sphere of what government ought to be doing, we need to look at, at I think there's over 2,300 federal programs. The GAO just came out with a, a report, it's an updated report. They now say there's over 180 programs that have duplications and efficiencies. We need to first start looking at these programs, eliminate the ones that are obsolete, eliminate the duplications and the inefficiencies, uh, send programs as much as we can down to the states uh, where the states are duplicating the program, and then look at, at what we've got left. And I do think that the government has a role in research. That's an area where the private sector sometimes does not have uh, the resources to get it done. So that's how, how we'll handle that. First of all, we've got to bring things back into the Constitution. Uh, we have regulatory boards doing things that I believe are outside the purview of the Constitution. When we've allowed our Republicans and Democrats in the House to uh, uh, enact regulations and taxes. So we've got to bring that back under the Constitution so it will stop the flood of regulation that's hitting us. Uh, the second thing is we have to grow the economy. Uh, since 19, early 1910 to 1913, we borrowed $10 billion. We've already proven that we can't pay back what we have because men and women don't have the guts to do what they need to do. Uh, we're $17.2 trillion in debt, and yet our first loan that we made back in the early 1900s, we hadn't paid a penny of interest on that. We have to change the fundamentals of government. The way we do that is by growing our economy and having men and women who are going to uh, enact these conservative principles in cutting our budget. A major, major <laughs> problem is you've got 435 House districts all wanting to bring the dough back to their district, and as long as they get the dough back to their district, they are can be very indifferent <coughs> to what money goes to other districts. It's a big, big problem. I've been trying to purvey in this campaign some ideas about that could help fight that. As to the specific of research in Birmingham, I get the impression that that is a high priority for money that comes back to Birmingham, and so that, you know you prioritize and. Insofar, you know, insofar as you're dealing with a situation where every congressional district is trying to get the money back to their district, you just, you know, you just have to pick your high priorities and do your best to get the money back for that. And I assume from the question that, again, research is very important, and that would, you know, I would work, look for information from other people about what are the priorities. Yes. Well, I think uh, we've heard most of the. What, what we really need to do, and, and a couple things that I, I would support. One is a balanced budget amendment. I think ultimately, long term, we, we can balance the budget over the next several years. 
it just takes uh, Congress uh, working towards that, and then we get to a balanced, uh, um, working towards a balanced budget amendment. As far as prior to prioritizing spending, I think you, you really look at it from a business standpoint. As I run my business, we look at what we have, the, how much money we have, and what we're going to spend the money on. We look for duplication of services. We look for, for waste, and, and we look for, for fraud. I think um, one of the other things, uh, um, we look for where these jobs are better done at the state level. We always look for, for the individual, what's best for the individual and the family, and then we can uh, uh, prioritize uh, uh, from, from that standpoint as well. So those are the things that how I would look at that. From a research standpoint, I think it's very critical that the government is involved with that. Uh, um, it, it's just uh, ultimately it's important that, that they stay involved from an NIH standpoint and what we have going on at UAB.